Welcome, this is the Jenkins Platform SIG meeting, September 23, 2022. That is right today. Uh, welcome everyone, thank you for being here, Mark. Today we have quite a long list of items to have a look at in the agenda. So we have open action item for Mark, of course. Uh, a little subject about WISC RIX5 and Jenkins agents, container image deprecation for the Blue Ocean container. Um, container repository management for Jenkins agents, we have to talk about that. Of course, we also talk about Java 11 or newer for Jenkins core. Of course, Java 17 support in Jenkins and also Java 19, which has been released this week. Next week, we're going to have uh, DevOps World and Mark and I will be there. So we, of course, have to talk about that. And the last subject will be the supply chain security. I want to know more about that because that's something I don't know yet. Mark will address this subject, of course. First of all, open action items. Mark, agents of CI Jenkins IO on PPC 64 LE. So still, still the I saw that the CI.Jenkins.io agent actually is still running there. So that oh. part is still functional, but I still have not shared the credentials. And I've, I've got on my own setup, I've got a problem with it that I need to investigate, that I'm not sure what's going on. So that will that will need further investigation after DevOps world. So you have your own PPC 64 LE? Actually, I just use the same computer. I just oh, have a okay. different user account, borrow the same computer, and, <laughs> I and that that's, way I, that's I nice. know when it's behaving or not. OK, that's a platform I don't own yet. <laughs> We'll see. Some of them are difficult to have, like the S390. That's not something I will have with me in the office anytime soon. Um, speaking of platform, next one is a short subject. But um, the other day, Michael Hurt um, organized a giveaway uh, to get a MQ Pro, so that a small, very small SBC with a Risk Five, just one core, one gigabyte of RAM. But it's a nice board, anyhow. And believe it or not, I put an entry, I say that, oh, I would like to try a Jenkins agent on that, and I won. So I should receive by next week, maybe um, at DevOps wall, uh, I will maybe get it there, or when I come back, so that I could, with lots of quotes, you know, <laughs> uh, try along the way to get Jenkins work on that. And of course, to get Jenkins agent working on that, we have to be sure that Java works. There are some GDK available for Risk Five. I will take some time to evaluate if that works or not. And I also love to run a Jenkins agent with Docker. So Docker is also available. But all of that is very early stage. So don't expect that something will be available in the next week or so. <laughs> no way. But anyhow, I would be glad if we could have another platform, another architecture available for Jenkins agents. Uh, next topic, Mark, this one will be for you. Uh, container image deprecation for the Blue Ocean container. I know you did a wonderful work with Kevin on uh, letting everyone know on the Jenkins IO website, just about everywhere. You know, uh, you maybe should get rid of Blue Ocean because it's not, uh, it, uh, I mean, bugs will be fixed, but that's all. You don't you shouldn't expect new features or anything like that. And of course, blue ocean containers will have the same fate one day or the other. So, well, and, and the containers, it's even a worse story, right? We've whereas blue ocean is being actively maintained at least for bug fixes, the, mm -hmm. the blue ocean containers, we're lucky that the automation is working that gets them new versions, uh, because none of us are doing active work to. To care for those the, the operating system image underneath it is not being updated there are all sorts of sort of legacy problems hiding there and we stopped over a year ago referencing those so this this is very valuable however it's going to have to wait till after devops world before i make any progress on it we'll just keep it on the list and continue reminding ourselves <laughs> yes we definitely have to um so yes we will have to write some documentation uh, on lots of different places and find a way to communicate uh, to users and admins. But this will be a work in progress. It hasn't started yet. But yes, that's something we'll address in the coming Platform SIG meetings. 
Now, container repository management for Jenkins agent. Yes, I can uh, testify. <laughs> this is not the simplest process ever. I remember making some uh, proposals, a pull request to change something in the Jenkins agents. And well, uh, I think we missed a version or a version for specific agents. And so it's not easy, even for the pros. So yes, definitely we have to do something to simplify the release process. Right. Yeah, Anything you would add, Mark? Just that we'll, we, we want to discuss it at the Contributor Summit or mm -hmm. at DevOps World because this is one that Tim Jacome has some insights, Damien Deportal has some insights, and they may have, have notions of how we should do this that would be better. And if we discuss them around a whiteboard in 15 or 20 minutes, things will go well. So we may, for instance, host that discussion in the Jenkins booth at DevOps World mm -hmm. or those kind of places. Just find a time when we can get together and say, hey, let's, let's talk about this to see where we think it should go. Yes, uh, definitely the place in the moment where we should discuss that because it's difficult to find uh, a right time to discuss that with the right person and the Contributor Summit and DevOps World 2020 will be the time and the moment and the place. Anyhow, cool. Next subject uh, is require Java 11. I've seen some news uh, this week, not really news, but you know, uh, mail saying that some people were still working on getting rid of the GDK 8 uh, links uh, somehow because some things are still referencing GDK 8. So there are still minor tasks ongoing. Mm -hmm. So it's written that it's not, it's merged, but not yet released for the Docker agents. Am I right? Actually, and I think I think it's still in progress. I'm not even sure it's oh no, it has it has merged. Yeah. Cool. So so your your note is correct. I'm impressed. I thought that it was yeah, it was actually merged two See days. The ago. Review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Ooh, good work. And it's also not um plugins beginning to require Java eleven. Yes, there are so many plugins we can't require Java eleven for all of them. So of course this will take some time depending on the time maintainers have and the emergency or not. Is it mandatory to do it as soon as possible or can we still wait? But anyway, it's not a good idea to keep working with GDK eight now that GDK eleven is at our door. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, now, time to talk about GDK 17 support in Jenkins. It's been quite a few weeks or months even now that we are working more and more with GDK 17, even from the infra CI. And for the time being, nothing alarming. Everything seems to be okay ish. Yes. Yeah. As far as well, so we've had specific reports about specific problems, uh, one related to Active Directory, and those problems are being investigated and worked. Mm -hmm. So it's not nearly as stable as Java 11 is across the whole suite of plugins, but still making good progress. That's good news. Now, uh, yeah, Java 19 has read. That would be good news. <laughs> but if you like to work more, <laughs> that's good news. Uh, I think you told me yesterday that the groovy upgrade required to remove illegal access warnings will make Jenkins contributors quite a lot of work, in fact, because that's a message we see more and more in lots of plugins, even in Jenkins core, I guess. So yeah, I guess a lot of people will have some tightening to do with the screws uh, in various places to get rid of these uh, illegal access, which will now be errors and not just warnings. Am I right? Yeah, and and it I, that I'm not sure. So I'm going to change the phrasing. It's that the Docker upgrade may be required. Oh, OK. Because I, I don't have an answer to the first question. Is it now blocked? And right now, don't oh. have time to investigate to see. We still have time. I was totally a drama queen regarding that illegal access. Right. But right. That's okay. We'll see. That maybe. Okay. I prefer that. <laughs> Let's investigate before being so dramatic. <laughs> Thank you. Anyhow, that's the subject we have to work on uh, in the coming month or year. We'll see. Next week is DevOps World uh, 2022 Orlando. Oh, how come? <laughs> so early. 
So Tuesday, uh, we'll have the contributor, Jenkins Contributor Summit, the whole day with lots of contributors. I'm really excited when I saw the list of people who were coming to that place and also the agenda because the subjects are really, really interesting. And as I said before in this meeting, uh, that's the perfect place and time in the Euro to discuss with the right people of the right subject for Jenkins. That would be amazing, I guess. No, I'm sure. <laughs> um, one of the subjects related to platform will um, be with AWS people talking about EC2 instances of macOS. They've published a blog post in Jenkins.io last week, I guess, uh, regarding the subject that looks pretty... Hmm. Difficult for a newbie. Um, for me, it has always been difficult to work with the macOS in the cloud. And it looks like they simplified the process, but it's still kind of complicated. It's not as simple as getting something running Linux, you know. But we need that as iOS developers or macOS developers. Of course, we need to have something in the cloud working. And I hope that it won't be magic anymore after the talk at the Contributor Summit. We'll see. And they will also be uh, from time to time in um, the AWS booth. So if ever we still have some questions, we will be able to ask them later on during the whole DevOps world 2022. Anyhow, last subject that I know nothing about, Mark, is supply chain security. So, yeah, so would you tell so, us a few words about that? So the, ins the, the prompting for this one is that about a year or two ago, the US government um, issued a uh, some instructions that said, hey, we expect things to improve with regard to software, software supply chains so that people know with confidence the source of the of the software component they're they are consuming. And mm -hmm. one of these these concepts was a software bill of materials or SBOM. And this SBOM concept is now apparently getting even more attention. And so it's probable that we're going to need to add some Jenkins capabilities to be able to easily and smoothly generate software bills of materials. And okay, hopefully it, we're not working with NPM. <laughs> well, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> well, you, you, make a, you make a good point because there are many different systems that manage dependencies, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's the Maven dependency system, there's NPM, there's the Python pip dependency system, there's the Ruby gems dependency system, right? Each of them has interesting and useful things in a CI context that may need consideration as part of this kind of effort. Our most immediate is probably the Java infrastructure or the Java, Java world and Maven, because that's where the bulk of Jenkins plugins and core are built, but, but it needs more discussion. Uh, so software bill of materials is one piece of it. Then there is an additional initiative from the Linux Foundation that is attempting to make it much easier for software, for people who are delivering software to sign their components with a, a, a verifiable signature so that others can assure not just what the software bill of materials might say as to what are the components of this thing, but also here's evidence that the entity that said they were creating it is actually the entity that did create it. That's unfortunate. You know, I'm supposed to give a talk next week. And one of the main thing I want to uh, address is that mobile CI CD is very different for other software because you have to sign it. You know, it's mandatory right. and okay. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and then not anymore. No, well, but your point, your point is very well taken because we've had to sign for many years Windows installers. Yeah. And the Jenkins Windows installer has been signed for years, but it's managed as a very, very carefully administered one-off process because the signing signing certificate is secret, right? And we mm -hmm. we can't expose it everywhere. This this signing of components technique is attempting to make it much, much more accessible to mere oh. mortals like me without requiring that I have to go pay extra money to buy a signing certificate. And I have to go through a long credentialing process to prove that I am who I said I am 
to the certificate authority. The, there are all sorts of complexities in these signing experiences that this, this Linux Foundation component is trying to remove or reduce the, the friction between software developers and the signing process. Okay, because when you someone says signing, you know, most of the time I've got my hair on the neck raising up. But if they right. remove all the pain points, I'm all for it. <laughs> well, well, and and that's it's it for me. The it's analogous to the kind of initiative that the people who are behind Let's Encrypt did when they made SSL mm -hmm. security for websites much much more approachable. There, it, it's still non-trivial, but it's very much more approachable and it's not costing thousands of dollars to SSL secure a website anymore. And this is the same kind of initiative, let, initiative, I think, let's bring it to the individual developer, the ability that they can with confidence sign a component so that others know, oh, this was signed by, by my authorization. Okay, and now, do they have a roadmap? Yeah, there's there's an awful lot to be learned there, and I'm the wrong person to talk anymore about it. You, we have exhausted my total knowledge up to this point. I've I've shared everything I know. Thank you. I didn't know anything about that, so now I know. <laughs> well, and and it'll that's part of the part of the power of discussing at the contributor summit or in at DevOps World in the in the, the quiet hours is that we can learn from others because Hervé Lemire, for instance, is quite interested in this. And he'll be there and we can talk with him and see what he knows. And I suspect that there are other players in the Jenkins community who are also already more aware of it and can guide us on what sorts of things should be considered. Mm -hmm. I see. That was interesting anyhow. Any other topics you are thinking of, Mark? None from me. Oh, it looks like we're done. Pretty efficient meeting once more. So if you don't have any other remark or question, let's um, make it decide it's done. So the um, recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours and see you in the next Platform SIG when it arrives.